Hey everyone, it is Wednesday the 7th of September and Jerry here with your Leeds news and quite a bit floating around this morning so we won't get mess around and we'll, we'll get stuck into it. We're going to start with some incoming news around January transfer window and it has been revealed by James Marshman and by Sports Witness that Leeds have been monitoring and tracking Italian 21 left-back Fabinho Parisa, who is a left back at Empoli, 21 year old left back who has played every minute of their first five games of the season and has even scored a goal. Uh, Fiorentina were linked with the player at the beginning of the January window, and his agent Mario Gio Ferretti has said this morning that a move in January or the summer could still happen for the player. He is a player of the highest standard. He said they've had many clubs that have been interested in the player from Atlanta to Fiorentina to Leeds United and Nice but that the agent and the player decided during the summer window to stay put, but hasn't ruled out the possibility of a move in January or in next summer's window coming up, and Leeds are said to be keeping an eye and monitoring the left-back position. Right age for Leeds, the 21-year-old bracket, isn't he? Um, and playing Serie A, playing every single minute of every game so far, is a positive. Um, Kai Wagner obviously still linked with Leeds as well as a potential January move, so... Although we don't think Junior Firpo is for moving right now, you can see there's possibly some movement in the background with Leeds looking at other players that could potentially come in in January or next summer for that position, or at least to provide competition and cover, which would be hugely important. Um, some other news on incoming that has come out around uh, Cody Gakpo, the never-ending saga that is Cody Gakpo. PSV Eindhoven's director, John De Young, has angrily hit out at Leeds and Victor Orta, specifically blaming Orta for what happened. He said that the... Comments over Gakpo changing his mind were untrue and that Arta did fly out to meet the player, did speak to the player, but that they actually fell short of meeting PSV Eindhoven's estimate valuation of the player and that it was simply a fact of Leeds didn't offer enough money for the player as to why it fell true. Seeing as Leeds have said they're going to go back in for the player after the World Cup in January, you would imagine he's going to be even more expensive and if we were struggling to find a fee to pay for him then... You would imagine that'll still be the case in January. But there's a lot of stuff coming out in the last couple of days around things that Leeds have said that haven't maybe been true or there's, there's at least room to be sceptical about some stuff that's been said. And we'll get to Jesse Marsh's comments about Dan James in a second as well. We will talk about that. But there's just a few rumblings of, of, of you know, not everyone being on the same page when it comes to the messages that, messages that are coming out of the club. And that's a, that's a concern that they need to sort out. Uh, another one of those is John Egan, the Sheffield United Irish centre-half, who was linked with Leeds as a move in the late minutes of the transfer window. Paul Heggingbottom was asked about the move, and he played it down, saying that Leeds were actually put off by the £13 million fee that was being placed on the player's head. And as an Irish person who watches Irish games, um, John Egan is an OK centre-half. He's any better than what we have, and £13 million is a lot of money for him, so I, I would understand not paying that for him. But that he actually, Heggingbottom has said that... Um, there was nothing in it. There was no offer. There was no discussions. There was no interest in the player. It was it's all nonsense and not real. So more information that came out that doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, moving on to uh, drama and players that uh, came into Leeds and then didn't come into Leeds. Bamba Dieng has been dropped from Marseille's Champions League squad. Possibly got to do with what he did on the final day of the season and Marseille looking to move a player out and get money in that they didn't, couldn't do because of Bamba Dieng. Would he pass the medical at Leeds that he didn't pass at Nice? Probably not. But uh, it would appear that Bamba Dieng is being slightly punished. Did he try and push a move through from Marseille to get out? And now he's found himself back in there. I did say the other day, how awkward is it going to be for him going back into the dressing room considering what's just happened? So uh, it, it's a big punishment out of a Champions League squad completely. Which is which is crazy. Um, moving on, some internal news with Leeds and talking about some contracts. And Graham Smith has gave some insight on the Rodrigo contract situation. His contract is to run until twenty twenty four. But Graham Smith has said that the Leeds wage structure has changed so much over the past three years that Leeds could struggle to offer Rodrigo a contract. They said that currently his contract is up until twenty twenty four, and that it's not a priority to Leeds just yet. It won't be probably a priority till they get to the eighteen month mark into the last year of the contract. Um, Rodrigo will be 33 when his contract expires and Graham Smith has said that when that deal ends, given his injuries and inconsistent form up until this season, Leeds might be willing to just wait a little bit longer to see what happens and he will be an expensive contract to do again given what he's on currently. At 33, does he fit the Leeds model at that age? Would Leeds be willing to let his contract expire 
keep him till, till, till the end of his 2024 deal. And then by that stage, you're looking at another 18 months for Joffe or even Wilfred Nyonto to come through. So there's that there's that window of space there that could look at with that as well. But yeah, interesting looking one with Rodrigo's contract. Uh, moving on to the last thing today, and then um, Dan James's situation with Leeds and his move to Fulham. Um, Jesse Marsh did an interview with Sky Sports yesterday, and it really does look like he's been sent out to do an interview because he didn't say the right thing in a press conference. I'm not saying that that's the truth. I'm saying it it appears that way. Um, Marsh did say in the, in the Sky Sports interview that it was a collective decision between all parties um, and one that he supports himself. He said that it wasn't an easy decision, but one that fit everyone. The player wanted minutes, the club needed an out to bring in a striker, and by the end of it, everyone was in agreement that this was the right thing to do. It does kind of jar with the comments that he made after his game, which, let's try and take a, a balanced approach there. A very emotional Jesse Marsh that had been sent off and leads losing pretty heavily to Brentford, makes a comment, looks very frustrated in the moment, Reading into that, is is he frustrated with the situation or was he just frustrated with the game and it overspilled? But uh, it definitely looks like some clarity was asked to be put on the comments that were made after the game against Brentford and looks like he's done that. And then lastly, talking about Jesse Marsh, he has, as been expected, been charged by the FA. I would be shocked if Leeds don't appeal that because from all accounts, he doesn't seem to have said anything inappropriate to get a red card. There's yellows and red. Give me a yellow card. Why go straight to a red? I don't know. I would have said something pretty severe to get a straight red. Um. The question will be this. If Leeds appeal, chances are they don't win. And then Marsh will be on the bench for non Forest game, but will be suspended for the Manchester United game. Do Leeds want Jesse Marsh on the sideline for Forest, or do they want Jesse Marsh on the sideline for Man United? And that's going to be a decision they're going to have to make. If they don't think they can win the appeal, miss the Forest game. Sit in the stands for the Forest game. Be on the bench for the United game. That's what I would do, but it would be interesting to see what we do. My personal preference would be, if he's going to miss a game, Miss the Forest one, don't miss the, the United one. I would be shocked if Leeds don't appeal this, but that probably means he misses the United game because I don't think they'll they'll win this appeal. Um, given how vocal and how animated Jesse Marsh has been so far on the sideline, there's precedent for his antics this year to catch up on him a little bit. Um, so but it's going to be an interesting one as well, but we'll, we'll wait and see. So that's, that's what's been floating around. So Fabiano Parisi being linked with the club, information on the Cody Gakpo deal, John Egan, not true. Uh, Bamba the Yang out of the... Uh, Champions League squad for Marseille and Rodrigo's contract and Jesse Marsh and Dan James' situation has all been resolved. So that's the news today. Um, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.